It's been a while since I checked out Gigabyte's first gaming monitor, the AD27QD, and since then they've gone away and improved quite a lot about it to create this, the FI27Q. If you want the ultimate 1440p gaming monitor, this could very well be it, and let me show you why. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. This is an absolute monster. Not only is it still 1440p, 27 inches, but it's also now up to 165 hertz. It's still IPS, it still has sort of 10 bits, and it still has FreeSync and full G-Sync compatible support too. What really makes this display fantastic starts with its panel. Like I said, it's an IPS panel from Inelux, and it's honestly incredible. Starting with the black to white response time, this was somewhere between three and four milliseconds on the medium overdrive setting, which is kind of, well, like I said, incredible for an IPS panel. Now, as always, the uh, white to black time, the sort of release time, if you like, is uh, considerably slower. It can be up to 16 milliseconds, so you do get some trailing edge ghosting, but when you're playing games, you definitely don't notice. One strange quirk I do want to mention is that on the maximum overdrive setting, it was actually slower and less bright, which I was kind of surprised by. Maybe the options are, say, you know, the wrong way around in the menu or something, but um, I would generally leave it on the, the medium or normal setting, as that was the best experience overall. Now, in terms of the input lag, this is uh, just... Uh, I didn't believe the result when I saw it. Um, using my Time Sleuth over HDMI, obviously that's running at 60 hertz, and the uh, input lag, especially at the top of the display, so that's you know the minimum amount of time for the image to be processed and sent to the panel, it was 1.5 milliseconds. That is absolutely incredible. A lot of the other monitors that I've tested are all, you know, three to five milliseconds there. So 1.5 is astounding. Uh, if you want to know the center of the display, that was about eight milliseconds, which because it's running at 60 hertz, obviously it takes time to draw the frame. And that's, it makes sense. It's about a millisecond, one to two milliseconds at the center of the display uh, per frame kind of thing. So big, big thumbs up there. And one of the most popular features on these Gigabyte monitors is something you can enable either via the on-screen display or via their OSD Sidekick software, assuming you have the USB 3 hub cable connected, that lets you download and install the software and then basically control every aspect of the monitor from inside windows rather than having to fiddle around with this little joystick, which is actually pretty cool. We'll talk more about that in a second, some of the extra features, but the main one that you can enable here is Aim Stabilizer. Now, Aim Stabilizer is Gigabyte's way of saying motion blur reduction. You would normally see this in other monitors as ULMB or ELMB. Um, it's basically just backlight strobing to reduce motion blur. And unfortunately, it will disable FreeSync if you did have that enabled. It would be nice to have them together, you know, enabled at the same time, but unfortunately you can't but it's incredible how they've done it. Now, a warning for any epileptics out there, some flashing images coming up, but as you can see with some high-speed capture, while it does definitely dim the backlight significantly, as you would expect, it doesn't seem to turn the backlight off completely. In fact, it seems to dither between red, green, and blue per frame, which is something that I've not seen happen before, but the end result is frankly incredible. Now, while it doesn't improve the response time of the panel itself, it still has some trailing edge ghosting. If you have a look at this still frame image, you can see just how incredibly clear the UFO is here. There's no crosstalk that I can see. It's still bright enough. It's still, you know, clear enough. And, and that's absolutely incredible to see. As for colors, like I mentioned, Gigabyte claims that this is a 10-bit monitor, and in fact, Windows would tell you it is as well, but they later correct themselves and say that it's 8-bit with FRC, or frame rate control. Now, while that's not quite an out-and-out -out lie, it is a little bit deceptive, as a true 10-bit monitor will be able to provide better and more colors to you, uh, to your eyes, than 8-bit with FRC, but it is still better than standard 8-bit, so, yeah, I'm not convinced that they should really be calling it 10-bit, but whatever. Anyway, the, the result is pretty incredible. This is possibly one of the most vibrant displays that I've checked out in a while, and whether you're watching, you know, whether you're watching content or whether you're playing games, it just makes everything look 
just that little bit better, a little bit more vibrant, a little bit just more beautiful to look at. Their brightness is actually significantly higher than they claim it is on their websites. I recorded this with my Spider X at around 435 nits at peak, which is kind of impressive. Gigabyte only claim up to 350. While that's not quite enough for HDR, technically you could do HDR 400, but Honestly, I'd probably prefer more like 600 if I was going to use HDR there, but if you're using it as an SDR monitor only, that's more than bright enough for pretty much any application. When it comes to the colors themselves, again, testing with my Spider X, it recorded well over 100% of the sRGB spectrum, as you would expect, but possibly more importantly, 90% of the Adobe RGB spectrum and 95% of the DCI-P3 spectrum. That is incredible for a gaming monitor. And if you wanted to use this as a, you know, creative professional monitor uh, with a bit of gaming on the side, for example, actually this wouldn't be the worst option in the world. Well, you obviously would probably want to get a calibrator to make sure that the colors you're seeing are as accurate as possible. It's still an incredibly impressive display that it can display that many colors, even from not being a true 10 bit panel. So, yeah, big thumbs up there. So, that's all the stats, but what's it actually like to game on? Well, honestly, it's an incredible experience, and I'm not sure that, especially for this kind of money, you can get anything better. When you couple those vibrant colors and bright display with the incredibly fast panel, at least for an IPS anyway, and the low input lag and smooth and responsive gameplay, I really I just had a fantastic time with it. If you play fast-paced games like CSGO or COD, for example, then I would probably turn off FreeSync and turn on Aim Stabilizer and you know hit those excellent flick shots with no problems. But if you prefer more racing or strategy games, I would turn FreeSync on and Aim Stabilizer off so you can enjoy a smooth and responsive experience while still enjoying you know the beautiful scenery as you rip around a racetrack. And that, coupled with our OSD Sidekick software, like I mentioned, that lets you control all of the standard on-screen uh, menu settings, but also some extra functionality like using the built-in microphone on the front of the monitor to do active noise cancelling on your headset mic or your streaming mic, for example, just makes this a very well-rounded package. Sure, the monitor still shakes a hell of a lot, and I think they went with more RGB on the back than stability, but either way, especially for the price that they're selling this at, which I'm going to leave a link to it in the description down below if you're interested, it just, I don't think that it can be beaten. In fact, I actually love it so much that I'm going to be wheeling out the awards for this one. Haven't given it an award in a while, but I genuinely feel like this monitor is worth it. And it's going to get a top tier award because, well, like I said, it's worth it. And with that said, those are my thoughts. I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the FI27Q? Is this the ultimate gaming monitor or would you go with something cheaper? Or would you prefer if you're going ultimate to go the full 4K 140Hz route? Let me know in those comments down below. And like I mentioned, if you want to check out the FI27Q and see pricing when and where you watch this, take a look at the top link in the description down below. That's an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see all that good stuff stuff. Otherwise, there's also a load of other links in the description down below from stuff like Overclock GK affiliate links if you're buying from there instead, or stuff like merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one, or Patreon if you want to get ad-free videos and support me directly, uh, Humble Bundle for cheap games to support charity, Streamlabs, OBS, VPN options, and just a whole load of stuff, so feel free to check that out. Otherwise, I'm going to leave some more videos over there if you want to check them out. Maybe the, the monitor reviews playlist so you can kind of compare. And otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, do leave those in the comments down below. But yeah, we'll see you all in the next video.